Australian registry to find someone suitable. Blood samples collected will be sent to Melbourne where they will be tissue typed and the results recorded on the register. Still to come in Vic News, two men are in a serious condition in Mildura Base Hospital tonight following two separate traffic accidents in the space of less than two hours last night. You'd be surprised how much plaque builds up around your teeth even in one day. Regular brushing removes a good deal of it, but what about the small spaces between your teeth the brush can't reach? What you need is a special pre-brush rinse. And that's exactly what new Colgate Active Brush is. A dental rinse that attacks the plaque between your teeth before you brush to make brushing much more effective. New Colgate Active Brush gets between for a better clean. John Deere dealers are ripping prices apart on tractors with great deals on these models. The 50 series, available in two-wheel and mechanical front-wheel drive versions. The Nebraska test-winning 55 series with outstanding fuel economy and lugging power. And the mighty 60 series four-wheel drives featuring modular construction, all with outstanding fuel efficiency, constant power engines and high resale value. Rip into your John Deere dealer today. He's got a finance package to suit you. Seven fantastic nights at a Gold Coast holiday apartment from only $409, including airfares. Since 1934, the name Davis has been associated with the craft of monumental masonry. From father to son, the tradition has continued, where today, Wayne Davis offers for inspection the finest display of Australian and imported stone memorials. Clients are welcome to discuss details in the new office reception or catalogues and home consultations are available without obligation. Davis Monumental, phone 245 997. A truck driver is in a serious but stable condition following a rollover in Dayton last night. The Silver City Highway in front of the Dayton Hotel was blocked for almost an hour as police, fire brigade and state emergency services worked to free the man from the crushed truck cabin. The semi-trailer was loaded with 22 tonnes of dry cement en route to a mining company in Broken Hill when the accident occurred at 7.45. The truck was being driven by Robert Smith of Launching Place in Victoria when it failed to negotiate a tight bend in the Silver City Highway adjacent to the Dayton Hotel. The Wentworth Fire Brigade rescue team assisted Dayton Police and emergency services personnel to free the man from the cabin of the truck using winches on police four-wheel drives and inflatable airbags. The prime mover was extensively damaged and the driver was taken by ambulance to Mordura Base Hospital where he is in a serious but stable condition. In a separate accident overnight, an elderly Mordura man was struck by a car in 15th Street. A well-known site in Mordura's central business district, Andrew Leonyi, was pushing his shopping trolley along the Calder Highway when he was struck by a Nissan station wagon near the intersection of Morpong Avenue. He was taken by ambulance to Mordura Base Hospital with head injuries and multiple fractures to the pelvis and legs, and tonight is reported to be in a serious condition. If a Victorian state election is not called by midnight Wednesday, the opposition is determined to see through its threat to remove the taxpayer component of retiring or defeated Labor MP's superannuation. Mildura MP Craig Bildstein, firmly in favour of the unprecedented proposal, says the government's decision will determine whether the coalition considers blocking supply and adopts the super's plan as policy. It was a decision that was not taken lightly, but given the circumstances Victoria now finds itself in, as a result of uh, eight years of labour incompetence and uh, maladministration, uh, not only is it reasonable, but uh, we believe responsible. Are you not concerned that it might alienate some of the electorate? Well, at the end of the day, the public are the ones that uh, will tell us, the coalition parties, uh, whether or not they want us to enforce this policy. We've given the government three options now, Kim, to uh, go gracefully and give the people of Victoria a fresh start. And three times they've uh, rejected that offer. 
Jeff Kennett was criticised when he was dumped in the past for being something of a larrikin. Do you believe um, that he has matured? I think there's no doubt that Jeff has returned to the leadership of the coalition uh, uh, with greater maturity and a greater level of uh, credibility within the electorate. But let's remember while Jeff is taking the front running on this issue, Kim, he's speaking on behalf of a team. Would this decision have been likely though under the former leader? No, I don't think so, but uh, you've got to remember likewise we were under enormous uh, pressure from the media when Alan Brown was leader for sitting on our hands and doing nothing. Uh, the criticism then was that we were prepared to allow this government to run riot for up to 18 months more and uh, plunge Victoria deeper into crisis and wait for an election to fall in our lap. Well, we were elected as politicians to safeguard the public interest, Kim, and that's what we're doing. We're safeguarding the public interest. We're giving them what they want. That is some leadership and opportunities for a new election and a fresh start. The Rural Water Commission has received more than 93% of the 1990-91 water rates due last Friday from local water works districts. Commission Regional Manager Brian Kiley says there is only one outstanding rate notice in the Millua, which is unrelated to the water rates protest. Despite concerns late last week about the return of cheques withheld by the VFF, most farmers have been able to make their payments. Irrigators in the Wimmera Mallee Water District have until this Friday to pay their rates completely interest-free or face interest charges backdated to December 1 last year. Increased neighbours have met We'll now look at the um, fr um, citrus report. Increased supplies of navels met firm demand in Melbourne this morning. Buyers are seeking well-coloured medium-sized Ling navels. Sydney reports strong demand for light supplies of navels. Selling values generally firm with most arrivals clearing. Imperial mandarins continue to meet steady demand in both markets. However, as supplies have increased substantially, the market is expected to ease. Growers and packers are urged to restrict consignment of grapefruit and lemons to firm orders only as more than ample supplies have resulted in a substantial carryover in both markets. Orderly marketing of grapefruit is essential if values are to be maintained. Modern Aboriginal leaders have come under attack from Australian of the Year Professor Fred Hollows, a leading ophthalmologist who has worked extensively with Koori communities Professor Hollows told the National Press Club the Aboriginal leaders have no idea how to lift their image. And he says Aborigines will not find solutions to their problems by looking to the past. Professor Hollows pulled no punches in describing how he felt modern Aboriginal leaders were handling the case for a better deal for their people in Australian society. The man credited with breakthrough work with Aboriginal eye problems in Central Australia told the National Press Club Aborigines need to speak for themselves rather than being sucked up into bureaucracy. He says Aborigines will not find solutions to their problems by looking into the past, but rather need a modern outlook to solve modern problems. Aborigines have not participated in the political process that will elevate them. They have not analysed their situation, forged a policy, agreed to, talk to tactics and gone about it like Catholic Australia did. Professor Hollows also attacked the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders Commission, which he sees as totally irrelevant to the Aboriginal cause. To think that ATSIC is going to provide a political movement for Aboriginal Australia is just crass stupidity. And if some people might say that modern Aboriginal political Australia may start with the demolition of ATSIC. And Professor Hollows has also urged state governments to help the Aboriginal health strategy in a bid to bring down the Aboriginal mortality rate, currently 25 in every thousand births, much higher than white Australia. Russ Street, Canberra. And now for a look at the weekend sport, it's across to Kim Shaw. Thank you, Caroline. Tonight we'll look at some of the highlights of the State League squash, so squash match. One, two, one, two, three, four. Success. 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 No artificial flavoring, no coloring, no preservatives, no mess, 
No exaggeration. Instant success makes all this and more. It's the multi-purpose baking mix from Defiance. It was one of those days when this song was playing. But most of all, I remember her face. Cause your arms are still wrapped around her. It's a facial moisturizer enriched with vitamin E from Nivea. Nivea Visage, part of a new range made purely for you. Who's at 8 Burn Court Mildura? The treated Pine Post Specialists, Sunraysia Fruit and Vegetable Growers Co-op. They're your local depot for woods and forest quality pine post and timber. Talk to the specialists about your trellising, fencing and home garden requirements. Shining like the Australian sun Soaring like no bird has ever done We love to see you fly When we spread our wings and take you into the sky Some state, the airline that shines in Australia Some state, the airline that shines in Australia The ADFA Gadget and Machinery Field Days will be held at the St. Razier College of TAFE Farm at Cowdross on Tuesday and Wednesday the 28th and 29th of May. Everything of interest for the man on the land. Eats and drinks will be available and admission is free. Good evening. Imperials will tonight seek approval from the St. Razier Football League Independent Tribunal to show videotape evidence it believes will assist in the case against Ruck Rover Wayne Main. Maine was reported in the last quarter of the clash against Redcliffs at City Oval for allegedly striking youngster Stephen Forbes. Imperials videotape all home games to assist with coaching. This will be the second occasion they have sought to use the tapes as evidence at tribunal hearings. Squash enthusiasts were able to watch some of the country Victoria's top players when the Mildura Squash Centre hosted a round of the State Super League. The visiting players turned on some top quality squash in the six match series and some talented local youngsters also got in on the act. The State Super Series involves six teams comprising one female and two male players. On the weekend, Sunraysia spectators saw the Bayside Bandits tackle the Southern Raiders in a style of squash that according to Mordura Squash Club coach Jerry Sturry, is a departure from the usual format. Yeah, you know, it's, it's virtually like uh, World Series cricket I heard described the other night, uh, as to cricket, and that's virtually what it is. It's, they make players go for shots, they only play, play for a certain length of time, so it stops the person who just gets in there and wears the other, grinds the other guy down. They have to go for winners. This makes for an exciting and extremely fast-moving contest, with each game consisting of two 20-minute halves. Spectators don't have to wait long for the action, and the talent on display in Mordura was particularly high. We had Bill Hadrill. Bill's only 18 years old. Uh, Bill's got a real future in squash. He's the re-rated number three in Victoria. Uh, we've got uh, Carol Owens, who is Australian junior champion at the moment. So we've had some really good stuff on there. In conjunction with the visiting stars, a number of the district's top juniors got to play curtain raiser matches, which provided them with some valuable experience. Yeah, we had Shannon Della Santa and uh, Rocky Rohde. Uh, under 14 boys and we had uh, Vanessa Johnson playing Lisa Rohde and they played really well. It's a good, good interest. And the spin-off overall for Sunrise Your Squash? Well, I think, for me personally as a coach, I think the greatest spin-off was uh, having the kids see how good they have to be, how, good, how much they have to work, how hard they have to work. And that was really good for me. With Sunraysia having won the state championship three years in a row and currently boasting the senior men's and women's state champion and both the boys and girls junior champions, the future for squash in Sunraysia looks decidedly bright. There were plenty of goals scored in Sunraysia soccer on the weekend with four coming from Rovers Zagreb clash. Andrew Wilcox goaled for Rovers before half time while the other three followed the break with Zagreb levelling at two all just before full time despite the efforts of Brian and Darren Coffey. Aztec ensured three colours stayed on the bottom of the ladder with an emphatic 2-0 victory. Kevin Healy and Roger Burrows both scored for Aztec with great assistance from Grant Brown and Jim Blue. In the other match of the round, Mildura United defeated Mildura City 2-0. In SFL football, Robinvale continued their winning run at the expense of a plucky Mildura. The Demons looked a better side with talented coach Darren Wood back after injury but frittered away a 40-point lead to eventually go down by 14 points. 
Full forwards dominated in two other clashes, while Redcliffe provided the upset of the season. At Kenny Park, South Mordura suffered their second consecutive loss, going down to Merbeen by 63 points. After a tight first half, the Magpies took control through centreman Peter Johns and halfback Mark McCarthy. When these players pushed the ball forward, they had Michael Johnson in splendid touch at full forward, and he took several high marks and often roved his own taps to register goals. Merbeen reaped the rewards of sticking to a game plan and playing disciplined football, while South Mildura will need to regroup and learn from Merbeen's example if they had to trouble the top sides. Imperials were stopped in their tracks by a determined and fleet-footed Redcliffs who bathed the reigning premiers on their own ground. It was the Tigers' youngsters in Forbes, Woosnam and Mays who ran all over the green and whites and combined well with more experienced players in Clark and Stevens. Coach Tony Hickey played a lone hand for Imperials while Michael Hogarth made a welcome return to form. But the Imps' brain trust must be concerned at the lack of application from some of their senior players, while many of the district's experts have already booked their seat on the Redcliffe's bandwagon. In the other match of the round, Wentworth ran out comfortable winners over a fast-finishing Irimple. Although the game was well and truly over at three-quarter time, the Swallows kicked 11 goals in the final term to gain some respectability on the scoreboard. Wentworth set up their win with Westcombe, Maynard and Forster continually winning the ball and delivering it to star full forward Mick Dean who was in super touch and finished the game with 10 goals. That completes Vic Sport tonight. It was a real pea soup morning once again in Mildura today and fog is anticipated again tomorrow. Full weather details coming up after the break. Safeway bring you the one day only, Tuesday only, Safeway Best Buy. 10 kilo bags of brushed potatoes, $1.79, save $1.20. For one day only, Tuesday only, only at Safeway, the fresh food people. Shell Rimula X, the oil that protects all kinds of diesel engines. Clearing the ground, moving around, preparing for cultivation. Cause the oil's really strong, but diesel lasts long, needs little maintaining. With Rimula X, the oil it protects, the difference is the saving. When the harvest is on and the hours are long, remember the lubrication of Rimula X. The oil it protects, it's your diesel preservation. Des Johnson knows this part of the country like the back of his hand. He can pick Ernie Jones's car a mile away. And he knows that the only time he has to stop at the local railway crossing is for the 428 train every afternoon. What he doesn't know is that today there's an extra train scheduled. When you approach a railway crossing, train yourself to slow down, listen and look carefully both ways before you cross. Hi, I'm Glenn Ridge for Carpet Mart Mildura. Here at Carpet Mart, there's the biggest selection of floor coverings under the one roof in Sunraysia, and discounts are huge. Carpet Mart considers no job too big or too small. So give them a call now for your free quote. Vinyls, the selection's big. Carpets, every colour and design. In the rug section, choose from all sizes and colours. So for your free quote on floor coverings, come in or phone Carpet Mart Mildura. Are you having drainage problems? See Barry McKinnon of Merbeen. He has for hire backhoes and chain diggers suitable for up to 17 inch trenches. For a no obligation free quote on all drainage and irrigation installation, phone 252080. Tonight's weather report is proudly brought to you by Collie and Tierney. If you're looking for a home or business to rent or offering one to lease, then phone Tracy on 212200. This morning's fog cleared in time for the release of 300 balloons from the Mildura West Primary as part of the school's Environment Day activities. The helium-filled balloons carry a letter encouraging anyone finding the package to plant the several native tree seeds also contained. The school's first seed lift was staged three years ago and as a result many acacias and native pines were planted and some of the seeds self-sown. Principal Bob Dalgleish says the balloons stay aloft for up to eight hours with a potential range of 400 kilometres. The furtherest discovered during the last lift was south of Avoca. Prep to Grade 3 students took part in today's exercise and contributed 50 cents each to the cost of the program. 
Isolated light showers persisted about Gippsland today, with fine conditions reported elsewhere. The only rainfall reported in the 6 hours to 3 p.m. was 1 millimetre at Warrnambool and 0.8 of a millimetre at Orbost. Maximum temperatures to 3 p.m. were close to average for May and were mostly between 14 and 19 degrees. The highest was 20 recorded at a number of locations. Melbourne today recorded 17, Sydney 21. Looking closer to home, Oyen today 19 degrees and Mildura just 15 to 3 p.m. That was after our minimum of 6 degrees at 10 past 6. Midday the reading 12.4 and our top at 3.15 was 15.9, the dew point 11. River heights in gauge readings, they range from 1 metre 48 at Boundary Bend through to 5.97 Euston, Mildura Weir 6 metres 72 and Wentworth downstream 2 metres 85 on the gauge. The high will move only slowly east, maintaining light wind and settled conditions over the state. To tomorrow's forecast now, overnight and morning fog otherwise fine, a mild and mostly sunny afternoon with light wind, no expected top temperature of very pleasant 19 degrees. The long range outlook on Wednesday, early fog patches then fine and cool to mild, Thursday and Friday, once again Caroline fine and cool to mild. Not bad at all is it Kim? That's right. Anyway that rounds up, that's the local aspect of Vic News for tonight. National international news follow here in a moment on Vic TV and until tomorrow, good night. This is National Mine News with Brian Naylor. All on board perish as a bomb explodes on a Lada air jetliner over Thailand. A nationwide train strike to start from midnight and a landmark Melbourne restaurant destroyed in a fierce pre-dawn blaze. Good evening. A Lada Airlines jet has exploded over northern Thailand, killing all 223 people on board, among them three Australians. It's thought the Austrian jet was the victim of a terrorist's mistake blown up by a bomb intended for another airline. As Mark Burrows reports, it had just taken off from Bangkok, bound for Vienna. The louder air Boeing 767 was in Sydney just four days ago. Today, wreckage of the airliner was found in remote jungle north of Bangkok. A loud explosion was heard moments before the jet disintegrated in a huge fireball. The plane, only 18 months old, was barely recognisable. The flight originated in Hong Kong. More passengers boarded in Bangkok for the journey to Vienna. According to the airline's founder, Austrian racing car champion Niki Lauda, the plane was just north of the Thai capital when it apparently exploded in mid-air. After about 20 minutes, it disappeared from the radar screen without any uh, discussions or information from the pilots of any abnormality. All 223 people on board were killed, including the crew of 10. Late today, Louder Air confirmed three Australians were on board the plane, a couple from Sydney and one person from Queensland. She is the only Australian identified so far. 22-year-old Britta Petzl from Gladstone was bound for Europe on a working holiday. It's also emerged terrorists could have bombed the plane by mistake. Airport authorities in Vienna have been told a piece of luggage containing explosives was supposed to have been loaded onto a United Airlines flight out of Bangkok. The tragedy is a personal setback for Nicky Lauda. Not only did he successfully take on the heavyweights of the industry, in Australia he fought and won a bureaucratic battle to gain landing rights. Tonight he is flying to the crash scene to speak with Thai air safety officials. Mark Burrows, National 9 News. The owners of the Swagman restaurant say they're devastated by this morning's blaze which destroyed the Ferntree Gully landmark. The arson squad is still trying to determine the cause of the fire which left a damage bill of $7 million. Tom Morland reports. A spectacular blaze roared through the Swagman about 4.30 this morning. The restaurant and adjoining Stylus Disco on Burwood Highway was one of the most popular entertainment spots in the eastern suburbs and featured lavish floor shows. For the owners, the De Jong family, 19 years of hard work is in ruins. This was a wonderful place. We had lovely people here. We had nice customers. We built this place up and now I look at it and I think it's terrible. <sighs> I was to say, 
about 100 CFA firefighters battle the blaze for 90 minutes before bringing it under control. The biggest problem is simply the size of the place. It's, uh, it's a very large area in there and also the fact that uh, a lot of extensions in the past, so there's internal walls, false ceilings uh, and those type of things, as well as the different levels inside the building. Did the building have any sprinkler system inside? No, the, the building didn't have a sprinkler system.